support now. So hello YouTube, we are listening with uh, Morphe fan. So knight f5, uh, bishop takes, queen takes. I mean, boy, that is another very bold decision, isn't it? Uh, what would you do last here if they took with the pawn, just out of curiosity? <clears throat> Um. <laughs> Only easy questions, sir. Today, no, no whackers, no whackers whatsoever. Um, just uh, the easies today. Well, this is like candidate moves anyway. I would look at knight d five just to try to mm -hmm. centralize my piece. Yeah. Um, I would definitely not play f6 after that, though. <laughs> because... that's, that's, that's good news. That's good news. Yeah. Um, Very good news, in fact. Yeah. What else? So l l give me your list of candidates, please, here. I mean, the position um, is so immensely complex that you can't even just shoot the, the, the candidates e at e me. E4 is kind of interesting, but then I think it doesn't work because if we push, like I was just thinking, like E4 D3, but okay. then we lose now, the pawn. We're this lose is last pawns. where your talent already shines through, yeah. because E4 is a mighty good idea here. It is. It's not a good move here, but it okay. is the right idea. And in fact, after rook c8, according to the engine, that's our number one threat. But I don't think that you see the idea full. So what would be the most logical and thematic follow-up to e4, d, e4? Obviously, d3 is hanging. You can't do that. So that's off the cards. Yeah, but so... Yeah? Um... Like knight e5, maybe? Or, um, or That would be part of the... C4. C4, C4 that's it, last. That's it, yeah. man. So this is what you want to do. You want to play c4. And if takes, then knight takes. And you are hoping to establish a beautiful dark squared blockade and utilize your pawn majority on the other side. Note, by the way, how beautiful this play is strategically. So this looks like a strategic blunder forcing this right when we have to give up our best bishop and get stuck with this filthy animal on g7 that does nothing and right after immediately as soon as we have a chance black goes on to change the structure entirely blasting this open turning that piece of whatever into the most beautiful piece on the board so that is a textbook positional pawn sack there for you with e4. Now the engine argues that rook c8 is the correct way to introduce it. And uh, it's above my pay grade to get that wise, so we'll just gently skip that. And after knight g4, e4 takes, and c4 is the marvelous idea of uh, the engine. Which is like, wow. And if they don't take it's connect four. <laughs> yes. Actually, better still uh, is is that um, we take this first. And if the queen takes, then we have d3 without even having to play up. Okay. And if Can the pawn... Hey? Can we just go back for a second? I just had one other... Yeah, yeah, go on. So, so before... Um, I would uh, Before we played rook c8, yeah. can we go back just... Back right before that. Uh huh. Work with me. Yep. Okay. Um. So, why wouldn't C four work now as like a prep move Hang for it. that? Oh shit. <laughs> what, okay. what, what, watch the lingo, brother. We are going on YouTube. Um, oh, sorry. No, no. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't want to prevent, uh, pretend that I'm not doing that, but uh, yeah, I, I'm trained to, to, to know when to watch it when, when we are recording for YouTube. So um, yeah, that's, that's the problem. And by the way, to be fair to you, um, Queen d5 and Knight d5 are both candidate moves by the engine. Okay. Thank you, Blobfish. Uh, which is interesting because it seems counterintuitive at first sight. Because obviously this surrenders all kinds of white squares, yeah? So now it, it's just ridiculous. But, again, if we calculate actually... Like, if we actually calculate opposed to 
just assessing this on the surface, then we realize that there's a tremendous pressure on C3, which is not very easy to manage. Because if you take, this structure has become a dream, with four versus three being very mobile, and these four here on the king side being complete garbage, the bishop is useless, this bishop is not exactly something to write home about either, all of a sudden all of our pieces make perfect sense. So this is just an immensely complex position where, yeah, I think uh, this is typically a, a position where a lot of time would be needed. And in order to avoid any kind of time trouble, best is to, um, you know, invest a bit of time in analyzing these positions so that you have a good feel for what's going on. Anyway, the game continued with queen takes f5. Uh, what would you do now? And again, a bit of a surprise for me, but you have a very good feel for the Spanish positions, so I don't think that it will cause it's any problems right. for you. Hey? I said, yeah, right. You do. Like, you remember remember how, how you absolutely dominated me with black in this? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think you blasted me to pieces here. I did, uh, but uh, that was only after I was on the ropes. So bishop takes f5, queen takes f4. What do we have here? We can't come back to e7, the drops a pawn. Ugh. I guess maybe it's just a simple knight h5 trying to trade. Oh, but that bishop's terrible. I don't want to trade off for that knight. <laughs> Did you say knight h5? Yeah. I wouldn't mind that if the idea was not to trade, which would be indeed just to truly awful, on... but to jump in. Yeah, to plant the knight on f4. Yeah, that, that makes uh, sense to me. What else would you say is on the cards here? A general rule of thumb, I no. think, yeah, Why do... you go. I kind of just want to play c4 again. Yes, I, I do like the c4 ideas a lot, actually, in this position, for sure. Uh, and in fact, it's... that's a uh, second choice of the engine. Uh, okay. The one thing that I really want you to be aware of when you are playing in such positions c4 is that yeah. sometimes this bites you real hard. Okay. Are you moving pieces, by the way? Yeah, I have got uh, I, D, C, B, C, Bishop, A4 played out. I can't see anything. Okay. Why is that? I'm like frozen here. Really? Yeah. I just refreshed and I'm still frozen. Okay, maybe I will refresh too. Let's see just, what happens. Just, no, just move some pieces. Oh, okay, wait. Yep. You're moving? Yep. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, actually, okay. on the bottom, it keeps on telling me that you left the room, you joined the room. You know what? I will kick you out and I will get you back. How is that? Okay. Oh, actually, you are out at the moment. It's saying I'm out? Yeah. It okay. says there is only one participant that now my, my side of the business is frozen too. Um, okay. Could you just, uh, oh, invite me again? Uh, that's the plan. See, I was just doing that. You probably had already captured the, the queen. And I had not or <laughs> captured the, the uh, piece on F5, and all I was seeing is like, it's frozen. Try moving the pieces now. There we go. Okay. okay, so the idea that I the idea that I was showing you was that after C4, you need to be mindful of D C B C Bishop A4. Got it? Yep. And that pin is a pain in the bum. Yeah, it's killer. Yeah, so you are very careful when it comes to opening up a position uh, for the white squared bishop. The the text one was queen c8. 
just a cheeky little mm-hmm. dig at having an end game um, where obviously your queen side pawn majority well it's not a majority but they are in motion right yeah and and without the queens the white holes so to speak on your king side will become vastly academic really so they immediately dodged that one now we took on c3 and that's another way by the way to shape the pawn structure uh also very typical for the system is to take take and play b4 i don't know if they did that they did because now that grants you access to d4 which is just spectacularly awesome yeah and it doesn't really yeah and it doesn't really matter because yeah that bishop's gonna, that late squared bishop actually is not going to matter at all here yeah now i'm going to t show you something and i wouldn't like to say that any of these things are typical last because having played h6 g5 we are out of typical so nothing yeah. is really stock standard like even i would say that this plan that we just did which was to take c3 and b4 would be the stock standard if the pawn structure on the king's side was uh, intact but here believe it or not i went back to just before dc in case it's not happening um so i'm i'm looking at now queen f3 back have you got that yep yep h5 is actually a recommended book uh, move by the machine and the idea is to just progress on with g4 and then potentially bishop h6, king up to g7, and even be the cheeky bugger on the king side. Also, h5 have, has the tremendous benefit of denying knight g4, so now the knight on h2 is truly a piece of work. Yeah? Yeah, no, I'm just thinking about this. It looks actually a lot, looks similar to some of the Italian structures. Yes, again. that's right. And very loosely, it's a King's Indian motif as well. Chat is wondering about your rating. By the way, I told them that you are about 1700 uh, chess.com, uh, about um, 500 for underrated. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I tilted a bit this week or last week, but uh, yeah, I was 1700. I'm down to like 1630 at the moment. But I had like a 12 game losing streak, so it's great. Good stuff. Yeah, all right. Okay, so let's have a look at the game. Bishop b3. And that's, by the way, the downside last. You need to be aware of this. So having played b4, it means that we are now surrendering even more white squares. So now, now it, it's, it's getting quite mental. But to be fair, bc followed by knight d4 is going to be a monster knight f1 we take and we arrived on d4 it's an absolute mess but mess is good you are going to out calculate and outsmart your opponents in mess g4 bishop h6 this is king's indian beautiful king's indian motif family i don't know how sound it is but uh, I'm loving what uh, white, uh, sorry, black is doing here. It's just uncompromising beauty. So that seems to me like a strange move. Queen c7, walking right into the pin, right? Yeah. I I'm hearing ya. Um. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say something smart, but um, it's not coming yet. Perhaps rook d8, rook d4, and he just wants to hold. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Hello? Rook C1. Obviously, we are not going to take because then that's going to hurt like hell. But Bishop D2, boy. <laughs> that's a way to defend C3. <laughs> and I'm guessing that if Rook E2... Actually, I was about to say take, take, but that doesn't work. What do we do after Rook E2? Queen D8. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, Lars, that we can just conclude for the rest of the game that this is a mess and somehow Black went on to win because I'm not a big fan of what I'm seeing, to be honest. Like, it's just a tactical chaos. Um, yeah. But for sure, um, yeah, this is, this is just a tremendous mess. But I do have, if you give me a second, uh, a few more games to look at in this topic. So let's have a look at, uh, in contrast to this, with a h6 game, knight g3. Um, let's, uh, let's have a high profile, okay? So we're going to have a look at Swidler Lico.
exact same story yeah um, so let's try to get that across to this beautiful website um, let's go shoot how do I get new board full con okay how do I set this up uh, last do you remember how did we do that games how do no. I add the new game um. add games wow this is so good man Lord PGN oh, Ta -da. <laughs> and away we go baby okay let's have a look at this is it moving on your side yep I got it okay awesome so same story but now here Leco plays h6 so we deny this bishop g5 story and I think this is what I would like you to do knight g3 and then we are good to go bishop f8 is a move here bishop e6 is another move Okay. Now, after bishop e6, if they play d4, we have to take, right? There is there is no negotiation yeah. here. So we yeah. take, and um, after knight d4, what would you say we need to do? Um. Just give me a second here. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess we have two choices. We could just take back, which allows him to centralize the queen. But mm -hmm. I kind of like just bishop d7 here for some reason, just so that like if he takes the knight, we take back. We have the long diagonal. What was it again? Bishop d7. Yeah, but then uh, okay so let, let's clarify this the, the, the reason why I really strongly dislike this move last is because it allows white to transition into a very fearsome kingside attack uh, yeah. this is on um, and uh, there are various sacrifices going to hurt us on the king side yeah right so we need to trade yeah you absolutely must so what you need to see here last clearly before you commit to take to d4 by the way is that in the end of this sequence you have rook c8 and this is the move that throws the spanner in the works for white because now i just don't have a very good follow-up there's just not a convenient move that would allow me to harmoniously continue developing and um yeah do what i want to do so now if i play bishop b3 According to the engine, the best measure to continue this is to play d5, which looks counterintuitive because yeah, it allows e5. But then after knight d7, now our pieces are going to come to uh, life again very, very smoothly. See, I thought d5 made sense there. But... Look, uh, to me, uh, me who is playing this with white, I usually like yeah. to get d5 if I can play e5 because that shuts this bishop in, this is isolated. Like this is usually good news. F4, F5 is is uh, playing itself. So there is a lot of benefits to this. It's by no means uh, something that you would necessarily want to embrace with black. Like yeehaw, couldn't wait for this. But uh, yeah. because of my development is somewhat compromised, um, this appears to be quite playable. Bishop E3, I suppose, is uh, is a line here, and then my engine wants us to play uh, Bishop here, and if the queen goes back. We even might want to entertain the idea of d4. Holy cow. Check this out. Actually, can you tell me the tactical justification of this? This is quite amazing. This is amazingly good, man. So, um, bishop takes and then knight takes e4. No, it drops. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, Banyas Baker. Thank you. Banyas Baker Bishop, is a Hungarian Bishop dude. Bishop takes d4. Um, Bishop d4, what do we do, bro? Yeah, that's what I'm asking myself.
Bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop takes b3. Mm -hmm. A takes b3. Mm -hmm. And then knight takes uh, e5. Mm -hmm. And um, can't take back because if it, if you play rook takes e5, rook uh, sorry, queen takes d4, so you need to trade queens. And I think you come out having liquidated the center and double the pawns. Mm -hmm. Look, you're, what you're saying is correct. I, what I wanted you to see is that bishop d4, bishop d4, queen d4, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight d5, queen d8, rook d8, and then yeah. rook a6 loses to knight a free check. <laughs> did, okay. Did we see that? No, I didn't see that. Okay. So that would have been I missed, the... I missed the last move. <laughs> uh, you mean the knight f3 or you already missed rook a6? Oh, I missed rook a6 and knight f3. So. Okay. All right. So um, that was a bit of an extra uh, there. That's what I calculated, but uh, I disagree with the whole line because after bishop takes d4, there is a, a move that uh, just, um, yeah, smashes white real hardcore in the face. Okay. A heck of a lot easier than any of the things that we just discussed too, by the way. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like it's literally a one move tactic. Oh, it's just knight takes, uh, knight takes e5. Exactly, bishop d4, knight e5, and black is screwed. You know, the funny thing is, is that was my first line, and then I gave up on it. <laughs> okay, let's go back all the way. So yeah. the continuation in the game was knight e2. What would you do now for black? Um... D3. <laughs> mm. Are you sure about that? The bishop takes? Whoa! Big raid from the legendary Thirsty Monster. Thank you so much, Thirsty. Uh, legendary. I, mean, I, don't, I don't see necessarily an issue with it. Just, I don't know. Thank you, thank you, thank Maybe you. Maybe I'm just giving up. Maybe I'm just giving up a pawn, but I think the bishop's slight. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe the Raiders, uh, we are doing a ultimate sensei coaching. Lads, are we two weeks out of the, the final challenge? I think we're a week out now, man. Oh, a week out. That's right. So at best, we have got this and another session. So Lars and I are preparing to take out the final competition. I actually don't mind D3. And to be fair to you, I don't know what was played. Um, do you think that uh, D5 has got... Uh, Something to go for it? Would you consider that? Thank you for the follow, guys. So, if if I were you, last my my um, textbook some textbooks, my uh, candidate moves would be d5 and knight b4. First up, these would be the first two I would be looking at. Okay. Uh, did you look at knight b4 at all? Yes, but only after I played d3. Right, because so. that my idea was to reverse it. Play knight b4, and if the bishop yep. rolls back to b1, then d3. Right, that's actually better. I don't know if it's better or not, but that that's what I would first look at. Because then if knight f4, then we are in a total mess. Because then you can chuck in knight c2. Yep. But they can also take on e6, which is uh, a bit of a blow that I would have liked to avoid. So, I still don't know wh which way uh, I would go. I'm very curious about where... Where you would go in this story. So the reason why I just suggested D3, just to get it out there, is we're going to lose that pawn anyway. Yeah. And the bishop looks, I don't know, it just feels like it's really misplaced when it's sitting on D3 here. Yeah, I agree. But so that I mean, being said, that... last, then you would have to agree with me that this would be a far more optimal way to, to approach the same idea, right? 
Yep. And actually, it turns out that that was played in the game. So now the big question is to how to respond to this. Thank you, thank you, folks. I really appreciate the lots of <laughs> follows. Sorry for not uh, thanking everyone by name, but uh, we are deeply in the lesson. The move that was played here, I really, really like. Turns out it wasn't the best move. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> well, tell me what, what you reckon he would do and, and we'll take it from there. Well, I want to... Well, yeah, I don't know. Again, I'd want to preserve the bishop, so... <laughs> um. So you are actually a better player than Leiko by the looks of things, Lars. So what he did was that he dropped back here. Okay, I see what I'm looking at is I guess the really weird, but um, yeah, do has tell. an idea behind it. Bishop c8. You are very close to being fully correct, sir. I know what you want to do. You want to come here. Yeah, that's exactly how I would play it. And uh, like I'm telling you that this looks actually semi decent. The only problem is that often when you land here, f5 becomes a square. I don't know. Uh, the engine reckons bishop d7. Believe it or not, is best. Yeah, and that has logic behind it too, I mean. And uh, the line that the engine produces is to quite a large degree surprising to me because the idea is that after a3, he just drops back. Yep. And after queen d3, I think it's just bishop f8. And the usual story happens again, which a lot of people seem to misevaluate, yours truly included <laughs> in this one, by the way. And that is, is that although the d6 pawn is isolated, yeah, we do not care. Yeah. We just play against the e4 pawn. And it turns out that we have got a much better chance to actually put noticeable pressure on that pawn than white has got to put on this. Yeah. And note that, of course, e5 with sneaky mates is not working because f6 is covering everything like the bosses we are. Often we then play knight e5. So that's an option too. And this position is just marginally better for black, according to the engine, believe it or not. Actually, the engine, after a while, changes its mind to instant knight e5. And then rook c8. Look, the general idea is, is that if white has to drop back to b1, and then we can manage to get a scenario when it gets stuck on b1, usually it takes a fair while for white to, to organize the development of this bunch. Yeah. And that normally allows black enough time to drum up counterplay. Um, okay, so let's have a look at how the game went. The game went d3, rook bishop back, knight c2, take, take, take. Rook c8, I'm guessing. Agreed? Yep, that's... Nope. Oh, look at the idea from last. And you are telling me, dude, that you're not 500 underrated? Yeah. Holy shimozils, baby. I think it requires calculation to get that extra 500, so... <laughs> that is just absolute mintox, man. Beauty. Knight d4, bishop b7. And um, now white has to play, it's... you know, some random spicy. blah blah chess because e4 is hanging. So from here on out, I have to just bluff. Knight of five, rook c8. Beautiful chess by black. Gluing, gluing the queen to d1. Knight g3, I mean, that's just sadness, right? Summertime, 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 sadness. I think you said that's the worst defender is the knight on g3. That is correct, although that is a reference to defending the queen, king, not so much the pawn on e4. But yes, I did say correct. that. Um, how would you proceed now, sir? And again, I must say that this is a largely stock standard operation, which I always misevaluate. 
because I always like it when it happens with white. I already mentioned this. So it's, oh, well then, that's a giveaway. It's just d5. Yes, it is d5, e5, and knight d4. Now, this move needs to be clearly seen. So now you need to give me a piece of calculation to prove that this is correct. So, uh, knight takes e5, um, d takes e5, and you can't take it because the queen trade will drop the piece. So what's the story with knight takes, d takes, queen d8? According to my chat, by the way, you are a number one parent. Just saying. No one says in the chat that I'm a good coach, but you're getting credit for being an awesome parent. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here instead then? Uh, I'm not instead, I just want you to to prove that correct. We, yeah. We, we don't need stuff instead, we just need to uh, go deeper there. Thank you, Catface, for the following, buddy. So, night takes, night takes. D takes, queen takes, queen. And then rook takes, rook on C takes D8. Or does it? Yeah, rook on C takes D8. Bishop takes. Lars, but stop. Yeah. Why on earth would you take with the C rook? Because I'd want to recapture on e5 at some point? No. You want to keep the c2 bishop under attack. So calculate for me, please. Knight takes d takes queen d8 rook e d8. And I'm going to explain to you why, the, why we are working that way and why that's a flow in your calculation. But I just want you to first hit upon the correct idea. So let's go rook e d8 and continue calculating. Oh. Okay, um, I can tell you what the end position is going to look like. Do tell. Uh, we're going to have a rook on d1, and we're going to have a pinned bishop, and we're gonna that bishop's going to be twice under attack, and there's going to be a king on h2. Yeah, so there is no bishop going to be on c1, because we're going to take it. It's not going to get pinned. Yeah? yeah? yeah. It's going to be taken. So there is no way on earth, mate, that in this position you would look at this. Right. That's bollocks. You only look at this, and if it doesn't work, I can guarantee you that you can can the whole variation because this is never going to work. Like, the opportunity for you to create pressure on these two, if that doesn't work, nothing else does. Okay. No bloody way. And, of course, bishop e4, bishop takes, uh, rook takes, rook d1, check, check, picks up the bishop on c1. In strong contrast, after takes bishop f4, I have no idea what you're hoping to even play for. Right. Yeah, so forget about rook cd8, it's peace activity above all. And those two rooks, yeah. man, on these two files, that's like a Picasso painting. So 100% you're doing it that way. Anyway, uh, after 94, um, they went bishop takes. What's the difference, Lars? No, we still have to take, so... Um... D takes e4. Uh, queen takes d8. Mm -hmm. I actually don't see any difference here. There is none. Yeah, this, there, the there is none. Is so we still take, and they still can take on d8 because we take back, and then the back rank is a problem. And now we have yeah. the two bishops. Matter of fact, Lars. I don't want to make a uh, too generic a statement, but these two bishops are so bloody good, I wouldn't even care if they won this. With this level of peace activity, even if they legit won that pawn, I would prefer to be black any day of the week. Right. Right? They can't, 
that's instantly lost because of takes in rook d1. But for argument's sake, assume they could. Even then, just the, the peace activity associated with rook penetration, takes bishop c5, is just immense. So there's no way that white would ever enter an endgame like that. Okay, your turn, bud. Well, there's the obvious tactical threat, but I don't think it means anything. There are a fair number of moves here, actually, that are very good for black. So it's rather difficult to go wrong, in fact. I just kind of want to shut everything down and just put like the rook on e6. Yeah, but you need to be mindful of this, right? Yeah. At least to some degree. Although, to be fair to you, after uh, rook e6 takes rook g6, the long diagonal could uh, play uh, quite a sizable role in this operation, yes? So knight e4, I think, would lose to rook c4, or rook e5 even. Yeah, so rook e6 here then takes. And now f5 is incoming, no? Right. So you don't even care about this. As always, Lars, there comes a point in in any position where no matter how good we are standing positionally, we have to tactically outsmart our opponents. Now, they played rook c6 here. Yeah. Yeah, which is a little bit odd. I prefer yours. Um, rook e5 is totally fine. The okay. idea is that after bishop h6, we have f5. Which is not an easy move to find. But again, this is just a, a testament to you how tactics is everything in chess. Uh, what happens last year after uh, knight f5? Knight f5 takes knight f6. Bingo. Bingo, baby, bingo. And uh, one of the miners are going to drop. Yeah. Yep. So that's that. Um, he played rook e6. Rook c6, sorry. Queen e4. And uh, black, he played an absolutely hilarious move. He will absolutely love it. A hilarious move? Yes. It, it, the only way to describe it is it's hilarious. I think you will appreciate the humor of it. I mean, maybe I'm misleading you here, so do what you would do. <laughs> I don't know. I just play like rook takes c1 here, but... Yeah, do tell the, you do, do tell your line. What, what do you do after takes? Then you just... That to me seems like it's fizzling out big time into a draw. Is it? Well, I mean, I'm not sure, actually. I prefer white because these pawns are rather loose. Like, what do you do? Rook takes, rook queen takes. What do you do? Like, you take a1, I take back. And I'm a pawn yeah, up as white. And you have got the... this hanging. Yeah. Right? So, uh, in general, I dislike this to begin with, unless it's a forced win, because it gives up our two bishops. Right. So, whilst you are thinking, I, I need to grab a quick drink. Um, 20 seconds. Um, let's see if we can figure it out. Take C5. I hope, Lars, you are not reading the chat because the chat figured it out. No, I'm, uh, I'm not, actually. Cool, cool. Just type in something in the chat, Lars, in chess.com so that we don't lose you again. 
the way you did before, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, so what's the call, sir? We want to make something happen on this diagonal. So you want to utilize the power of the rook and the uncontested bishop for sure, right? Don't Correct. call me lab. Thank you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So how can we make that happen? I'll give you a hint, last. It's a queen move. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> uh, maybe it's uh, you're not good at finding ridiculously dumb moves, right? So, what um, do you reckon, last about this? Oh. That's uh, that's quite the battery. How <laughs> <laughs> that is a monster of a move, baby. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's a stupid move. <laughs> I didn't say stupid. I said it's hilarious. Yeah, that's that a good move. that it would uh, create tremendous tension on the long diagonal, like so. Um, quite quite something, right? Okay, what now? Uh, heads up, Lars. Rook. Yeah? Oh, what? I was just say Rook F6. Freaking legend you are, man. Freaking legend you are. Nothing short of a genius. That is a bloody awesome move, man. <coughs> that, that actually was a blunder. That was the game-losing blunder. And that's it. Lakeo just mopped up. Bang, bang. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Tactics. Tactics, baby. Always the Tacticos will decide your chess games. Always the Tacticos. And that is just a cheeky, cheeky oh, one to yeah. finish on. That was great, actually. <laughs> hmm? That's a hell of a move. Mm. Yeah. I think I don't need to show you the rest, right? But I will because yeah, I'm nice. Carnage. Yeah, it is Carnage. And uh, Swidler threw in the towel here. Dude, dude, that uh, that is going on Twitter. I'm gonna put this position up on Twitter. This is freaking awesome. The screen A8 idea. <laughs> That's good. That was very good. All right, uh, Professor, I'm going to show you uh, just one more game um, to give you a bit of a feel for, um, um, yeah, just for in general for this. Rui Lopez structures, and it will be a bit of a mix because it's not a traditional main line, but it's a bloody good game, so I thought I would share this with you. And now we are relying on a book that I have been working with, or rather on lately, a fair bit. Uh, and like I said, please ignore the, the move orders here. Uh, I'm getting this game for you from uh, Florencio Rios's, uh, what is it called again? Chess Structures Grandmaster Guide. Um, so I'm going to fly through the opening moves because they are vastly irrelevant for our purposes because I it's want to get, structure. we want to get to the structure. Bishop G5 labeled as a beginning of a bad plan. And indeed, as much as your bishop doesn't belong to here in this structure, White's bishop hardly belongs to here either. Right. Okay. First question, Lars. What to do now? That was a very unexpected question. Um, knight uh, a5. With the idea of? Kicking the bishop back and then playing c5. Yes, yeah, so your idea is to play c5, precisely. Very good. Okay, c5 was played. Now, what is the stock standard operation against d5? Uh, 
And actually, I disagree with the author of the book on this matter. I know sometimes we want to play c4 and then plant the knight on c5. Very good, lass. The, uh, the author says that after d5, queen c7, uh, black has a good position, yada, 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 and he analyzes the nonsensical bishop f6. My problem with this move is, uh, <coughs> is that after b3, our knight gets stuck on a5. Hey, real Richard Rapport fan, I will talk to you in Hungarian when uh, the recording is done. Uh, thank you and welcome to the party. So now b3 and the knight is stuck. And the idea is that if after b3 you try to come back here, then they play b4. This is the very yeah, famous multi... That we have, the, that we have the, the Spanish knight, which is arguably worse than the French bishop. Correct. This is what we know ever since Cap of Unziker, that very famous game. So the way you address this is to play c4 right away. Yeah. And the big difference here is, is that if they play b4 here, you take, and if they take back with the pawn, you have the luxury to keep the knight here, wait for b4, mm -hmm. whereupon you can jump in, or if c4, yep. then b4, and then you can come around. As a matter of fact, here you would be very happy to play a move that supports b4. Yeah, because the structural change with b4, c4, and the knight routed to c5, that's like a monster. So yeah. isn't the problem though with playing rook b8 um, that if you ever want to move that knight though, so... I would be even sacking that knight. But if you want to prep it with queen b6, that's probably better. Okay. So it doesn't really make a big difference. So so we're okay though in giving up that a pawn then? I, w I would totally be happy to to give up that pawn in a, in a context like this. Although, okay, I'm not doing it too well now because knight b7 rook here, I can't then go in because d6 is dropping too. But see, like in a position like this to play something like queen b6 and then reroute, perfect. Okay. Like it doesn't get more winning strategically than that. So anyway, uh, long story short, they played here knight b3. And uh, the question is, is that what is the sexy now? Well, then I would just play knight c4 because I don't see how we're going to get our plan in here. Okay, so what do you do after knight c4 rook b1? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but now we have got an awkwardly hanging pawn on c5. Yeah, I, I don't dislike this for black. Queen c7. See, yeah, this is actually, this is one of those reasons why I actually wanted to see these games and like see these Trigorin type mm. So it was setups. a good thing that I brought this up, right? And because this is exactly the type of thing, like, I, I sort of just run out of ideas. No, I like this. I like what you're doing. So okay. now now it's totally on black, on white side of the court, the ball is. So just like, we're f so it's just like in any other structure or like any other of these types of positions we just put our queen on c7 and, and look i i just like, played queen yeah. c7 because this is hanging yeah yeah so i it's but not I, like it's some normal. kind of sorcery i also decided that it was a good idea to remove myself from this pin because i might yeah. entertain this idea okay which by the way you would never consider seriously with the bishop being on this diagonal but since they stuffed this up by putting it here, now I'm exploiting the fact that b3, sorry, f4 is poorly defended, right? Yeah. And you have got a tremendous amount of useful moves. You can get cheeky on the queen side. You can play rook c8 with the idea of take, take and exploiting this. Um, yeah, plenty to play for, man. You can yeah. sometimes consider taking this way and then pressuring e4. I wouldn't do that actually with the bishop on d7, but yeah. The possibilities are quite numerous. Uh, after knight b3, they decided to take on d4 once. Okay, and that solves the problem of the soft pawn. I suppose it also allows you to pile up on the c rather easily. Yeah. Um, although, according to the book, the idea was to take. And after knight b, d4, queen b6, it says that black is very comfortably active here. 
and frankly it's difficult to argue with because usually if you allow if you accomplish putting uh, playing g6 bishop g7 in this pawn structure that means there is no knight f5s ever this bishop is ridiculously tough on the long diagonal and just in general it's not clear to me what white is playing for there are a lot of logical black moves here left in the tank and the IQP is fine. We have like a million. Yeah, like I said, this is under a lot more pressure than this one is. Yeah. So uh, I'm liking this for black a lot. Make no mistake. Um, so they actually took on a5. <clears throat> we took, they took, and again, we went for this. And this move even gets an exclam. Now, obviously, Queen takes here, loses to 94. Yep. Or g5 and then knight e4 according to the book. I don't really see the difference there. And after knight e4, queen b6 x clam. Claims black to be better. Which is a wowzers, brother. So I'll tell you what the book says because I think it's quite instructive. Uh, in the long term, white should have a huge advantage because of the d6 pawn is weak, isolated, backward pawn and easy target. However... Black's pieces are arranged so well that it's not clear white will have a long term. As in, white won't live to see the day when the d6 pawn is yeah, weak. Black's not. bishop is extremely powerful along the long diagonal, uh, pressuring the d4 knight and the pawn on b2. Meanwhile, white's bishops on h4 is useless and would have been far better placed either on e3 or after b3 on b2. Knight e3, bishop e6. That is to clear the path of the knight knight d4 uh hello what ah oh, he was offering a draw here right so he was hoping to to score a draw here with this repetition great what was black's move he last your favorite oh bishop c8 <laughs> bishop c8 brother bishop c8 um <clears throat> special welcome to the tinder girls in the chat Hello, good fella. Um, queen d2, bishop b7, and now this is just perfection, right? Yeah, I don't. So they had to take this, and frankly, I would rather chop my hand off in a position like this with white rather than taking this. So yeah, that is just bad business. Take, take. Um, rook a d1 and this move is labeled as the last mistake what's the correct move here sir that uh, is going to put this whole white position in shambles What's the time with you now, Lars? What's that? What's the time? That's al it's almost 11. Ah. Perfect time for me to stream for those parting uh, American youngsters, right? Like the yeah, Tinder girls. Yeah, I think you, you, can get, you can get the West Coast where it's... Uh, where it would be 9.45. Yeah, right. So the West Coast is still partying. Awesome. I feel like an idiot right now, so... <laughs> well, let's remove the pressure. It's not like it's a knockout victory, right? It's just a strategical concept that is based loosely on a tactical idea allowing black to claim an advantage. It's not like a mate in two. Okay, well... I mean, I just want to bring my last piece in at the moment. <laughs> Rook on A to C8 is probably what I would play, but that doesn't seem right. Um, yeah, there's something more concrete. Thank you, Dark Academia, Vanessa.
Maybe just d5 here. Very good. Last d5. Just rips them apart. Yeah. d5 and there is no adequate response. Because ed is not possible due to takes and d4 is falling. This is where these two bishops, man, are just absolutely killing it. They're, yeah. Like, it's almost, almost like... I, I know it seems like it's intuitive. It's probably especially intuitive to you, but like... In this situation, by playing d5, it's like, oh, I'm blocking that long diagonal. So you don't, like, that's sort of what was, why I didn't really consider it. But then, like, when I started thinking about, like, yeah. he can't push the pawn at all. So it just drops. Yeah. Although, I would like to say that to you, Lars, though, that I don't like the type of thinking that this blocks the bishop. Yeah. Considering the fact that you have just created tremendous tension here. Yeah, no, I had to... That's why I said, like, I had to think about it a little bit harder. Yeah, because this is not a static situation at all. In fact, on the contrary, it's extremely tension-heavy. Like, the only yeah. way for this bishop to be blocked in if they could push past, which you would dread, but that's not to happen. Anyway, yeah. uh, I will show you how it went, but just very briefly, because uh, the rest is just absolute carnage. Rook e4, uh, rook e d e, and here... Um, why try to get cute by sacking this in, hoping to get some counterplay down here. And indeed, after gh, queen takes here, there would be some counterplay based on this and this check. Yeah, so let's let's not get too cocky and celebrate too soon. After knight f5, our best move by far is the measured rook d8. Which is going to eliminate all hopes of counterplay. Yeah, so in strong contrast, if they take now... Then we take, take, um, and wow, my arrows are top notch. And then take on f5 when there is no more pin here. That's sadness. Yeah. So they yeah. Uh, they had to surrender themselves to the fact that this was to be done. And now, last, I need the last beaut. What is the oising on the cake, brother? Just play well. I would just play bishop uh, d4 here. Um, and uh, you would be playing a reasonably decent move, although I have to tell you, last that you see that knight g3, knight e4 comes back on time to at least hold it together for the time being. Yeah. Um, the chat agrees with you, by the way. And uh, I guess bishop d4, knight g4, f5, knight e3, f4 is all kinds of carnage, but uh, there is a far easier move that uh, mops up here. Actually, no, both to the chat and to you. Bishop d4 is bollocks because after knight g4, f5, there is queen a6 check. So forget about that uh, rapidly. I, yeah, there's like a million arrows on here. I can't even visualize it right now. My, uh... no, 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 dude, I said bishop d4, knight g4, f5, queen a6 check. Oh, okay. Is just... Yeah, there is a, an easier easier tactic here. Unfortunately, the chat has already found it. They have no respect for you, dude. What? No. I, I said they have no respect for you. They already typed in the chat in the chat the correct move. Yeah, I can't see the chat anyway. I know, matter. I know. I'm just putting I mean, like, the pressure. I see, I see a tactic here, but I, it sucks. <laughs> Yeah, it feels we... like it allows counterplay. <laughs> so, so like one, I, like one thing that I looked at immediately was just like playing. Uh, was just like Bishop B two. Yeah, then... I would prefer not to hear that. Exa ex well, that's what I said. It sucks, right? Yeah, yeah, so... I know. It has got the uh, crap written all over it, right? So, um, I mean, 
just for simplicity's sake, I'd kind of just want to play like, um, no, that doesn't work either. Damn. The name of the motif that we're looking for, especially if it was a composition, it would be interference. Right. Oh, geez, and I looked at that move too and I missed it. <laughs> That's brutal. Okay, so I think I think the idea here then is just a simple uh, e3. Indeed. 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 Takes, takes, bishop d4, queen d2. And right. uh, I don't know what to do now, do you? Eshmati, hoira, brother, let's go. There is someone in the chat who is uh, just about to depart to a competition in Hungary. So, let's go, Mati, let's go. Let's go, Mati, let's go. Actually, I'm lying to you, bro. They played the king f1. Uh, that's night. That's what I meant. They played king f1 here. What's wrong with this? <laughs> I'm not I'm not seeing the knockout win here, I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, the, no, the, even the book doesn't mention anything here, so we left our own, our own devices. So I'm guessing it's bishop d4, but after queen d2 we still have a bit of a... They still distance. work, like it doesn't... Distance to cover because bishop e3 allows check, although then we have f6. Take. Yeah, no. So bishop d4, queen d2. What do we have here? Yeah, but we can't do the, uh, the battery because of bishop f3. That's exactly my problem. How about uh, queen f6? I did look at queen f6. The, but I don't see the plan. Like, we can't go here, right? Sorry. Uh, so... So what would you play in response to queen f6, you said? I don't know. Like, Bishop, I'm just Bishop curious what you want to do. So I will play pass. Okay. So you'd, you'd play b3. Yeah. Which defeats the entire purpose of that, what that idea would be. <laughs> okay. I'm glad. I mean, there is no point in looking at King F1, right? Like, he just absolutely yeah. mopped up after Bishop D4. So, let's try to figure out what happens here. And uh, that would make me happy. I'm not testing you, by the way, as in, in the sense that I don't know what's going on here either. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that it's actually an interesting position. Because by rights, we're better. But how do you execute it? Someone said, let's play queen d4 instead of bishop. By the way, it's possible that bishop d4 is not the move here. So maybe we should go back all the way here. We might be staring at the wrong position. Wow, I can't even remove the bloody arrows. Okay, so let's have a look here. Maybe chat is right that I shouldn't get ahead of myself. But queen d4, b3, I still don't see that either. I don't know, man. This 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 is this is a bit tricky. What would the legendary Nargav do here? Is the big question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's see who that was. That was Lestrelin. Nagav says I am stuck. I mean, you could probably sit and think about this for a while at this point. But, and we already have. Uh, 
Yeah, that's right. We did uh, sit and uh, thought about this for a while, but uh, okay, I'm going to feed this to the engine because I don't want to waste your time. And uh, I am very curious if I'm missing something in the Gartany or it is actually a little bit more complex than... Uh, so what? Bishop, we didn't look at Bishop H4. I don't think it changes anything though. Okay, T two comments to make. One, we are totally winning. <coughs> Excuse me. Two, the winning move is actually quite obscure. And I don't really hate myself for not seeing this, although I should have found this. Uh, the winning move is Queen E6. And the idea is this double attack. Now, is it lame yeah, that no. I didn't see this? Yes, but... It's 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 um it's obscure. Someone well, in the chat up. yelling at me that they sort of said it, but um, but of course they didn't. They just want undeserved credit. And uh, and awesome. if Bishop be free, then Queen E two just on time. Okay. Thank you, Hayes three or for the follow. And then we're still coming in with. Oh, okay. Bishop D4 is uh, filthy. B2 is hanging. Yeah. Uh, the it, only way to defend is Queen Queen F1. It, it looks like queen yeah, no, no, but the B you can't drop B2, so that's over. Yeah, well, that's what I mean, right? So. Yeah, Queen C7 is what I looked at with the counter attack, but then just uh, check and check picks of the queen, yeah. Mhm. Mm uh, Catface says that if Bishop D4 doesn't win, he quits chess. Let me tell you the computer evaluation after bishop d4 minus minus two point something queen d2 and then queen f6 so we, we looked at this but we didn't see the win i mean okay uh to be fair i'm looking at this now with the engine so you know what the engine says i'm not kidding you the engine says he black's best move is bishop a7 if you have to find that move to win this game, I do consider this line to be rather obscure. Nonsense. Rather obscure. Yeah, like this is this is not human. That's not a human move. That's not the type of crap you would throw in. And by the way, the sole purpose of the move, just so that we are clear, is that white wants to sorry, black wants to play queen here, bishop here, and come in here. So that's by no means obvious that our winning method involves voluntarily giving up this absolute ripper of a pin. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would definitely say that that's just... Uh, Impractical. Uh, it, it's tough to find, yes. So queen e6 is a lot easier because that, that just makes so much sense, right? It's just bang, bang. That that's That's an easy human move in comparison. Yeah. So, yeah, Lars, um, do you mind if very briefly we have a look at your recent games? <laughs> sure. Um, that was like a very backhanded yes. <laughs> we, we can look at my games. <laughs> I like it how I clicked on Rapid specifically and it brought up I all, all... I, I can't see now, so you're going to have to share your screen. All the bullet... I love I love the platform. Uh, so I'm looking at match type. The bullet, the bullet is a problem. So well, you mean the fact uh, that you played this much bullet, whilst you are getting caught. On the right, life types. Let's not look at my bullet games. <laughs> well, let's let's just pretend that you didn't even bloody uh, play bullet. So, I would be better if I didn't. Yes, it would be better if you didn't, as you know only too well. What what eight lost streak are you talking about, bro? Is that this one down 12, here? Twelve streak. Never happened. Never happened. Okay, very last quickly. Week. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to embarrass you. Actually, I'd like to look at the game with Mitch Fabian. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, you popped them all up. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, I did. 
might be too. Really? Just watch. <laughs> I wanted to put my knight on uh, on d d six. I screwed the, I screwed up the king side attack here, but you'll watch. <laughs> so. Yeah, this move doesn't come to me at all. I would either play queen b3, rook b1, or pawn c4. Yeah, I had really determined at this point that I wanted to play uh, b2. Yeah, there. I tell you what my problem is with having a knight on d6, is that I'm not quite sure if it's attacking it does anything here. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Like here, for example, after knight d5, I don't know if I'm very keen on your position or not. Okay. With uh, a6, c5 to come. Right, like you have to play bishop d2, I'm guessing. Yeah, I don't know. This seems to me like we, we gave too much for too little, but okay, let's go. Um, okay, now this looks like a million dollars. Yeah, and I screwed this up real okay, hard. Okay, queen d2. So. I don't know what the engine would say. I don't like this. I would just take the... Okay. What? Can we just take this in an e5 or something? Do they take like this? To be fair to you, if we play here bishop d3, they play e5, right? Yep. And that's a bit depressing. What's bishop g4 like, he last? Actually, as soon as I said it, I just realized that bishop g4 is just instant win here. Like, knockout. See ya. Yeah. And actually, I think queen b3 works as well. Yeah, so that was a total no-go. You tend yeah. to have this issue, last that, that you tend to tunnel vision on one particular tactical idea when the position actually offers an abundance of them. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, is I played like super fast here, so yes. I wasn't looking at my options and then I just blundered this, so. Okay, that was terrible in terms of yep. the final attack, <laughs> so let's not go there. Is this what you are meant to do here, bro? Um, couldn't remember. So I, I know that, that this is an idea in this, but I couldn't remember if it's this exact line. So, but yes, the, the knight in this situation does come to at least e2. Well, now it's looking like a million dollars, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, you can just choose which side you want to win the game on, right? Now you can go castles f4 and then play for e5, which is probably what I would have done. But this is also totally winning. Oh my god. Rook b8. Yeah, they resigned here. I mean, rook b8 is illegal, right? Yeah. Okay, they can't see what I'm doing now, but you can. Um, so let's just very quickly have a look at the theory of this last, because um, you only play f3 Nimzo, and so we need to be at least uh, better prepared than they are, yeah? So yeah. after castles, I think... Okay, so it is knight e2. Yeah, knight e2 is correct there because you can't, you don't want to play knight h3 when when there's no knight on e on d7. I thought it was some bishop move. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah. All right, so that game was really really convincing, and I liked it. Now this king's Indian is a new thing, is it? This yeah, I did. This was me screwing around. Now but, this yeah. this was a mouse slip, right? Yeah. No, yes, exactly. It was supposed to be e5. <laughs> okay, so we're not looking at this. Yeah. Um, I have seen this. I thought it was meant to be knight b3. I always play back. Like, I don't know what it is. I think it, this is something I've never done theory on. It's just, it sucks so bad. I just usually win these games, so. Yeah. But I always go back to knight f3. It's never not worked for me. <laughs> yeah, knight f3 is probably the worst knight move here. Okay. 
sorry to <laughs> sorry to rain on your party too hard, brother. But uh, yeah. no, no, that's it's. But this is why we do it, right? I yeah. Mean, the it's... idea, the idea is that you really want to exploit this and the ninety five possibilities. So this allows you to get in here with a temple. Okay. But funnily enough, the engine wants e four. So if knight d five, then I guess the queen goes back somewhere. They insist on d six though. And then knight f six. Oh yeah, that's why they didn't go to d eight so that you can't pin it. And this is not perfect, so he wants to play e4 here first. Yeah, I guess. Okay. We went knight f3, that's suboptimal, but now your opponent lost the plot, I remember this. Okay, rook c1, and they lost the pawn on e5. Yeah, that was that was well played by you, and then we killed them. Yeah, okay. Good work there, and that was the Mitch Fabian game. Which was quite interesting actually because you played this quite well for a while and then yes. it went, and then it went two phased so let's have a look it's all good until here ish a5 That's is fine. the engine's favorite move for the record not something i would uh, naturally go to and i like this the first thing i would like to show you here is that after you play c, c pawn move you always have here 94. Yep. Now you might argue that you don't want to play the end game, but I'm telling you that this is a a, a decent choice, Kay. especially against someone who is 700 point rated higher than you. Okay. Um, but uh, that's yeah. Not I, I didn't like G5 here actually. Neither do I. And like, and when I talked to Mitch after, because we we talked about the game a bit, he's he suggested like Knight F8 here. Yeah, the engine likes it too. But to be fair to you. I don't know to who I want it to be. It feels so passive, right? A fair to you. Cerebral Assassin. Hey, hey. Um, I don't like Knight of Fate either. Because my problem here is is that um, I want to find a plan. I don't yes. know what your plan is after this other than wanting to play Knight G6 with the temple. Yeah. That's all cool and pretty. But what are we going to do after Bishop G3? Yes. I, I this just, is actually I, why I kind of hate this opening. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> yes, anyway. and I agree with that part of you that, that it's too static. Yeah. It, it, it is very, very static. And by the way, that's the reason why here I prefer to play C5. Okay. Because that lends itself to a far more lively position. Yeah, because how, how I feel like when I'm playing this is I'm getting beaten to death. I'm waiting for someone to just bludgeon me. Yes. Uh, because the problem is, is that uh, here um, you are playing a very, very um, firm and boring and sturdy structure, which is quite difficult to crack, but even harder is to do anything with. Yeah. Which is, by the way, why Knight he was a good option here for you. Okay. But uh, I don't... I If I could advise you, I would tell you to invest some time into exploring the C5 line here. Okay. It's admittedly riskier, but it's going to uh, give you uh, chances to play for initiative. In fact, I would play C5 here, I think. Yeah. Because there is this line here, man, when they play C4, and it's quite fun. Like, that's how you play for a win in the uh, bloody um, Ragazin. I thought we even had Queen A5 here, but don't we? Now the stake is in. Yeah. And if take, 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 then just Knight D2. Yeah, don't do that. So we need to play C4 right away. <coughs> Knight D2, Bishop E6. Bishop E2, castles, castles, Knight C6. You know, it feels like we're playing for something here. Like, if these pawns get in motion, you pull the bishop back and b4. I mean, holy cow, man, that's gonna hurt. Well, at least, you know, at least there's something to be done other than just... Yeah, other than you sitting in a rigid structure without two bishops waiting for them to, to chop your head off. Yeah. 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 Right, last, we're going to call it a day here, mate. Um, yeah. Um, that was plenty uh, for a sesh for today. Um, we should be long. able to meet one more time before the tournament, yeah? Yep. Okay. 
Okay. All right, dudes, key, take care. Enjoy your chests. Uh, whoever we are going to get, we are going to demolish them because that's what we do. Um, thank you for the YouTube viewers. Uh, I'm going to stop the YouTube recording now. Uh,